Today's video is going to be part three of this steel O20A rebuild. Last time we got the new crank bearings and the crank in and the cases together. Today we're going to work on putting the piston and cylinder on. We'll do a pressure and vacuum test. If all goes well, we'll try to put this thing all the way together today and maybe here it run. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is attach my piston to the crank. <clears throat> if you can see, the arrow will be going towards the exhaust. And the first thing I'm going to do is insert one of these clips, sir clips, into one side. Just going to do that with needle nose pliers. And take your time because you don't want any of these to go flying away. Put one end in. Okay. Don't know if you guys can see this, but it's in now. I have the opening facing upwards. I have some two stroke oil here. I'm just going to lube up the wrist pin very generously. That just slides in. And then we will. Make sure the arrow is pointing towards the exhaust. Slide this over. And the wrist pin should slide through. Okay, wrist pin is in. Now we'll insert our last sir clip here. And I'm going to put a rag down under here just in case anything drops. Okay, second wrist pin is in. You want to triple check that everything's in the groove. And then we'll move on to our piston rings. Make sure that your arrow is facing towards your exhaust. It's pretty easy. Mine has writing here and you can see the way the opening is. This says top. So we'll go ahead and put them on. And you want to look and see where your the needle the pins are. So I have one pin here and one pin here facing towards the intake. Bottom one here, top here. Again, we'll go ahead and coat this in two stroke oil. And I'll put a little around the piston as well. You can get a tool to do this, but it's really quite easy. To try to get it started on the groove that you want. Okay, that looks good. Same thing on the top. Now we're all lined up. Things looking good. Okay, now that the piston rings are in, we'll go ahead and work on the cylinder. Probably should have put that on before I did the piston rings, but seems to be okay <clears throat> again with the two stroke oil since the pistons already lubed up we don't need to do that but i'm going to lube all inside the cylinder really well and i'm just going to carefully make sure it's turned the right way and work one at a time here It should slide down <clears throat> really nice and easy. And right before you set it down, you want to make sure your gasket is lined up. Once you have your gasket lined up, you can start putting in the cylinder base bolts. I'm just going to lift mine up a little bit. These are definitely a pain to get in, so it might take a minute. I'm just going to start them, because I want to get all of them started where I can see them going through the gasket. OK, 
Okay, once you have them all started, just get them all snug and just keep tightening them up till, you, till they're at spec. I just go in a crisscross pattern. Cylinder head is on, so I want to go ahead and get it ready to attach the body. So the first thing that I'm going to do is install these rubber grommets. There's two that are similar that will go in the front two and then one in the rear. So we'll see how hard these are to get in. All right, I'm going to install this back buffer. Here we go. The grommets are all in. Um, it's pretty hard getting these in. I think they sent me the wrong ones. Um, so I had to fight with all of them except this one. So kind of skipped over to that part. But I mean, it's basically just shoving rubber down in here. So now we'll move on to getting the body on it. Okay, I'm putting the body on. First thing that I'm doing is working this front piece in between these two rubber grommets so that I can start these screws. One started. Okay, and then this is the last piece, the last bushing. Okay, all the bushings are in. Actually, this is wrong. This should be gold like this. All right, everything's signed down. I'm gonna go ahead and put these plugs in, so. Big plug goes in the back. That. The plug with the screw in it is going to go in, in this one because you're going to need it to screw the this piece in. The little chain guard. The last one. Okay, cover, 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 buffers are good. Now this will sit in here just like this. Okay, that part's done. Now we have just a few more things to go and we'll be ready for a pressure test. Not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see in here or not, but Basically, I need to get the intake on and then the pulse line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You guys probably can't see, but right in here, I've attached the intake boot. And right below it, I've attached the pulse line. <clears throat> okay, in order to pressure test this, I am going to be putting the exhaust on with this piece of rubber here. So I'll just install it just like this to close this off. And then on this end, I have another piece of rubber that will go in front of the intake. We're ready for a pressure test now. So I have a spark plug in. I have a piece of rubber here behind the exhaust. I have another piece of rubber here behind the car boot. And then I'm hooked up with my pressure tester into the pulse line. So this is going to check the seals and everything in the top end. And I'll do a pressure test and a vacuum. So first thing that I'll do is a pressure test. And I'll go somewhere between 5 and 10. Let's see if you guys can see it. Okay. And then we'll just leave it there at 5 and it's not bleeding off at all so we know we're pretty good 
I'll keep it here for a little while longer, but this is a good sign. And this is a pressure test. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to vacuum. So now it'll go this way, again, between five and 10. Again, it's holding steady. Now that this all passed the pressure and vacuum test, we can continue on with the build. Um, we're gonna work on the uh, flywheel side first. It's pretty easy. Um, you just wanna take your flywheel, make sure you line up your key, make sure you still have your key in here. If you didn't take it off like me, you will need that. Okay. Spin your nut on. We're taking this to 29 Newton meters. I have the string in the, uh, in the cylinder. Let's see if we can get it tightened down here. Okay, that was easy enough. Now we're gonna move on to the CDI. This is gonna go just like this. Two holes that we removed, I'm gonna get the screws, the bolts started, but I'm gonna leave them loose. Maybe about an eighth turn from the bottom. We just need to make sure we get our spacing right on here. And don't forget, these have washers on them. Okay, we want to make sure that we're getting our spacing right. So here I just have a plain index card. Um, while you're holding it here, you have your spacing. Just go ahead and start tightening it down. And these are pretty tight when you take them out. So I like to do the same thing. Put them in, I give them a pretty good torque. No specs on this, I don't think. Gonna feed this. One is your spark plug wire. This goes back down through this grommet. And it slides in <clears throat> right into this black trigger mechanism right here. Just like that. Now we'll just go ahead and put our cover on. And you want to leave that one because that's part of the trick chain break, which we'll put on later. While I'm on this side, just to finish it up, I'll put in the gas and oil caps. There we have it. This side of the chainsaw is pretty much done. Now we'll work on the clutch side. Moving on to the clutch side, we're going to get started here. First thing you're going to use is this uh, spacer, or washer, or whatever you want to call it. It goes just like that, that side down. Then we'll start spinning on our clutch. Okay. And this is going to 49 Newton meters. It's not going to work. Still have your rope in your cylinder. Um, 49 newton meters, which is a pretty good a bit. So let's see if we can get it here. <clears throat> Calling that good. Have our needle bearing. This is just white lithium grease. I'm just gonna add a little bit to it. You don't need much. Even that was probably too much. Okay, now I'll move on to some of the other stuff. This is the oil pump, oil pump gasket here. Just gonna try to line it up as best as I can. This will go in here just like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the chain brake on. 
Should be pretty easy. The first thing that I'm going to do is use this little spring here. Half of it. There's a little hole for it to go in down here. And this is going to face away from the cylinder. This part. Kind of got to capture the spring. Then you can move it. And it'll set down right here and right here. Once you have this spring loaded, take your metal band, fit it around. You want to go in here, all the way around. Just set it down. Right here is a spacer that I put in. Then we'll just hook these two pieces up here. Okay, once you have it set up like this, you'll have two clips, one on each side here. I just get them started and pinch them with some pliers. Try to. One. Okay, so we have the band on, both of these clipped in this piece on. Now once you have that on, you can go ahead and put your oil pump gear on. Just slide right in there. And the last thing that we need to put on is right here. It's the big spring. I grab it with these. And just make sure it's pushed down on. Now we can go ahead and put our cover on. Just like that. Once you have your case on, your cover, go ahead and take your snap ring pliers. There we go. Make sure that fits in there nicely. And you have your top cover. And one final clip here. Now we'll bolt it back on. There we have it, covers on. Continuing on with the clutch side, now I'm gonna put the chain adjuster back in. Two new plastic pieces that go right here. And then I'm going to put the dog back on just like this. And up top there is a, a nut that goes under here. Last piece is right here and this just slides down over. Okay, this side is pretty much good to go except for the cover. Getting there now. Now I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this side up by putting this chain on. I'll do some of the final tightening later, but... And then just put this case on. Okay, chain's on. Now I'm going to work on the exhaust. And the muffler. Muffler's on, so now we just have a few top cover, carburetor, and we'll be ready. Okay, it's time to put the carburetor on. We have the pulse line and the fuel line we have to hook up. And first thing I'm going to do is slide this gasket down on it. And we'll slide our carburetor on, and if you can, Try to slide it into the pulse line as you're going down. And then for the fuel line, I've been lucky being able to get it afterwards. There we go. Push these wires out of the way. Your two eight millimeters. 
And then we have your throttle linkage. Okay, that took entirely too long, but we got it. All right, carburetor is on. We'll button the rest of this back up. I'm gonna put the air cover on now. You wanna tuck these wires, this yellow and this black one and the spark plug in between this crevice here. What you actually wanna do is put the yellow wire in the housing right here and that will go with this bolt right here, so. I'm just gonna put it over here and try to feed it through. I'm gonna have another right here. And then on this side, gets the special bolt with the, because it's going into a rubber grommet, so. Okay, now, you can go ahead and put your back cover on. One of the last things that we're gonna install here is the chain brake. It's gonna go right here. We have two bolts on this side. And then the one with the washer will go on that side. Chain brake is working. All right, now I'm gonna install the handle. Two bolts on the bottom here. And two bolts on the side. Okay, there you have it. Steel 028 has been rebuilt. All right, we've been messing with this thing for a little bit, but she starts. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this is a full rebuild on the steel. I've already checked it out. The oiler's working. It's running good. So, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the series and see you guys next time.